Your life experience, good or bad, is a gift when you share it with others. At Taxi Chronicles, we allow real riders with real stories to share their gift. So hopefully this episode will intrigue, enhance or inspire you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another rider, another story. Today we're honoured after having an actor from Hollywood yesterday. Today we've got a, a an agent. Now, you know what? Let me let the lady introduce herself, but we are calling her Sally today. It's so nice to have you here today, Sally. Thank you for having me. This was an um, unexpected surprise. So can you tell us what it is you do how you got into the industry? Sure. So I am an entertainment lawyer, and that probably just sounds like a very fancy name for a lawyer, <laughs> but that's literally what I do. So um, effectively what that means is that I negotiate talent deals and I negotiate rights deals to get TV shows and films made. Um, and I'm, I'm from America, as you could probably tell by the accent, and somehow ended up here in London, haven't left. And um, yeah, so that's kind of how I got into the industry. After law school, I was luckily enough to get a studio job and then, you know, opportunity after opportunity just kept opening. So I'm very lucky. Okay. So first, first of all, going back a bit, what kind of person were you when you were in school? Uh, that's a good question. Do you mean like in school in terms of studying or in school socially? Both. Both. <laughs> Hard working. Uh, well, I think it's interesting. I've always just worked my ass off. I think that's what you have to do in this industry. Okay. You always have to set a goal for yourself and see how you can achieve it. And if it doesn't work the first time, you have to recalibrate to see how you can make it work. So in terms of my studies, I was always studying 12 hours a day in the library. Sometimes I'd finish at like 5, 6 in the morning. But when it came to when I switched off studying and I was social, I was a complete party animal. So if I'm starting to five in the morning, I am partying to like six, seven in the morning. That's just kind of how I operate. Okay, that's good, that's good. What was the educational route you took? I know you, our educations are quite, qualifications we have here, we usually go for GCSEs in school, then we have A levels, then we have a degree, and then the masters. If you go into that later, what was the route that you took? Right. So I think it's slightly different in America. You do high school, then you get your undergraduate degree, which is what you guys call uni, I think. Yeah. So we call it college, and you do four years in what we call college, which is what you call uni. And I did film. I did uh, film production as my first degree. Then um, I worked for a few years as an anchor woman. Okay, like, like anchor man. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I did. Yeah, so I did that did for a few. Then. Yeah, I did the news. I did the morning news. Okay, give, give us a give us your opening line that you you do on the news. Oh, I would I would say, good morning and welcome to the morning show. This is Sally. Last name fake and fictional. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How did you find that? Oh my god, it was so much fun. It was like the time of my life. Um, okay. But you know, there's always in the back of I'm, I'm Asian, so okay. it was always, you know, when you have Asian parents, they're like, okay, that's nice. That's a nice, cute little job, this anchor woman stuff. So when are you going to like do medicine or law? Like real money. You know, that's yeah. like, that's kind of the pressure. So, okay. but I thought it was interesting and it's something I wanted to achieve for myself. So I went to law school. Okay. That being said, would you. When you have children, assuming you haven't got any now, I don't. Would, would you have the same mindset when it comes to your children, or would you be more free? Probably, to be honest. I, I know that I always thought, you know, I want to give my children more freedom, but I think you, a lot of who you are is how you were raised, and a lot of who you are is your culture, and I think I definitely value that. But if they were like gung ho about something, that you can't control it. You got to let them do what they want to do. You know. Okay. So it's like more guiding them. It's guiding them. Like, I would hope you'd do this, but... Like a sail in the wind. Exactly, exactly. Well, I'd be the, the captain, then be the sail. <laughs> quite, quite a few hands on deck to uh, 
that work is here, you know? Exactly. It, 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 it's hands and neck at times, especially depending on the weather, the weather standard. What, that, would you, what would you say that you've learned that you wish you knew when you started that your industry? Um, what I wish I knew. I think the one thing that I wish I knew is that this entire industry is built on how you can talk to people. Um, and one thing I would have told myself when I first started is you get more bees with honey. And that sounds really, really ob obvious, but you know, I don't know if you've seen Entourage. Have you seen Entourage, the TV show? I've heard of it. So basically the way that Americans negotiate, so I negotiate deals is they will want to make you cry. They don't want to give on any of the points of the deal and they just want to defeat you. It's you're going into battle when you're negotiating a deal. Is that just, is that America as a whole or is that New York? Because I heard like, for instance, New York lawyers are very aggressive. Yeah, no, it's Americans as a whole. Okay. And you're taught to be aggressive. Like, you know, the people that I work for, and it was a big company, they taught me to be aggressive. So when I came over here, I had that same attitude and it did not work because British people are so polite. So you, you have to kind of, they, no, literally they complained about me. They were like, this woman is so aggressive, you know, but really what it is, it's now I've learned to change the way I talk and I kind of prefer because your stress levels are down throughout the day. So instead of making a statement, a direct statement, you phrase it as a question. Yeah. That's something very British that I've noticed. Little things like that I wish I had known, but how can you know them without experiencing it? It's funny you say that because that's also expressed in politics. That's what, sorry? In, in, it's expressed in politics. Yes. Um, like, for instance, the foreign office, the way they deal with things. Yes. Diplomacy. So, for instance, we've had our problem with terrorism because yeah. of our old history of 2,000 years. Right. Um, you guys may have problems with terrorism because of what you're doing now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean that's that's you know, so like, true. I mean, now is in pre-Biden, but yeah, yes. Yeah, but no, what well, I'm just saying, even if you went back to the uh, Bush and further. Well, if you go back like, to the 19th century, yeah, it's it's been it pil like, it's been that pillage culture from that. It, yeah, it's just like learn to allow everybody should be be happy. You should leave the negotiation yeah. table. Happy, and that is you, you hit the nail on the head. That yeah. is when you know you've negotiated well. Yeah. When both people walk away and they're like, Okay, That's I'm good. happy with that, and yeah, we'll I business. like that person. Yeah, we'll do business with you again. Yeah, there's no bitter, bitter feeling that they feel that they will uh, try and get exactly. This is the thing, and you never want to leave like that because you'll probably negotiate with that person again. What does your future hold for you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think one day I'd like to be uh, like the head of a big studio. That's the eventual goal. So I've got a few years before I can achieve that, but that's the career path. Being Asian, have you ever considered Bollywood? Being in <laughs> I'm probably the worst Asian you'll ever meet. <laughs> I don't even know how to cook a curry. <laughs> no, but, but for the body, yeah, it doesn't matter about the curry. I think it would just be fun, to be honest. Like, those Bollywood productions, like, I'm going to be honest, I can't take them seriously, but they're just fun. But there is actually a really good TV show uh, called Made in Heaven on Amazon Prime. Have you seen it? No. Check it out. It's about the, the, the world of weddings and two wedding planners. No, that's, not my, that's not my kind of show. Not <laughs> your show? You might like it. It's actually quite gritty. Give it a try anyway. I don't work for Amazon, so that's not a plug. <laughs> so, you've been a great guest. What's the impact you want to have on the world? Uh, that's an interesting question. I would think there's, there's many prongs to impact, right? The first is creating entertainment that provides voyeurism for people career wise and then the second is the people that I come onto contact with I want them to make feel good about themselves okay. so however it is I achieve that that's the end goal okay that's good okay well thanks a lot for that thank you very much and we wish you well
We hope you like that Taxi Chronicles interview. Don't forget to share and subscribe to get the latest episode. Ever considered investing in the continent with the fastest growing economies and population on Earth? The same continent that holds 30% of the world's known natural resources. Listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories, where you hear real investors with real stories from around the world share their experience of investing in Africa. We post Monday and Thursday at 10am, British Standard Time.